Okay, so we got one news story, at least that I found for today. Um, no, I, I only just discovered it like about an hour or so ago, and I felt like, yeah, you know, it's it's probably worth bringing up because it goes into uh, more a Activision nonsense. Uh, so I need you guys to take a shot every time Activision says no to a fan-made project. Because it's, it's probably the second time it's happened this year. Because we already talked about H2M. Well, okay. This is before I started news from the bunker. We talked about Activision closing down H2M a couple months ago because they were like, Oh, it could interfere in sales with Black Ops 6. No, the fucking one of They're fucking whacked for, uh, for, for, for thinking a mod would outsell their game. A, a mod, which, by the way, that you would have had to have purchased... Uh, COD 4 remastered for so uh and then people you know refunded COD 4 because they were only buying that game for that mod so Activision actually lost money in that endeavor so they're fucking idiots for that one um but we're not talking about H2M today today we are talking about I guess there was a uh I guess there was a fan made remake that was in development for Vampire the Masquerade Redemption. Now, I've slowly been kind of getting into the Vampire the Masquerade uh, stuff in like the World of Darkness. I know there's like fucking eight books. There's like eight different games tied to the World of Darkness. I only know of uh, Hunter the Reckoning because I used to play uh, Wayward on PS2 way back when. Um, Obviously, yeah, Vampire the Masquerade, and then Werewolf the Apocalypse, which I did play. I did play this on the stream. I played it on my own time. I played Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood, and I think, I think I played that during pandemic. I'm not sure. It was, it was a, me it was a mediocre. It was relatively mediocre. Um, I don't know why the fuck we haven't been getting any good werewolf games lately. I think it's a little bit whack, but regardless. Yeah, so I guess this uh, team of modders, they were in the middle of making a uh, a fan-made... This is a, apparently... This, is a, this has been in development for three years. This fan-made remake of Vampire the Masquerade Redemption. Um, it was being... It was, it was basically a Skyrim mod. It was being made in Skyrim's engine. So, it, this is another case of you would have had to have bought Skyrim in order to, uh, in order to download this mod. But, uh, it's kind of weird, because apparently, uh, Redemption is owned under both Paradox and Activision. Uh, because I guess both of them, uh, have different rights to that specific title. Uh... So even though they got a yes from Paradox, they got a no from Activision, which I can't say I'm exactly surprised at this point. I feel like if you're going to make a mod that involves Activision, you're just 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 go off the bat and ask them before you start developing it. Because at this point, I think I think Activision I, Jesus words. I think Activision has shown at this point that they don't give a shit about fan-made projects, even if they're free or if they require you to buy the game, uh, like a, a game in order to play the mod, a game that Activision owns. I think at this point, just expect Activision to say fucking no every every time, even though it's dumb. This is something I said a while back, but like if I ever got into modding and I got into like developing like a fan-made remake of a project um i'm just not gonna say anything about it i'm just not gonna say or talk about it at all uh not promote it or nothing i i would just work on it until it is good to release release it and if whatever fucking company decides to hit me up with a cease and desist i'll get rid of the mod on my end oh sure i will but um, kind of like the uh, the A2M uh, stuff, which if you guys don't know, that's the uh, another Metroid Two AM2R is what is what it was. Uh, that's the another Metroid Two remake. Uh, the day after that 
that uh, remake got released and Nintendo sent that developer a cease and desist. But um, what goes on the internet stays on the internet, uh, I think is the, the try and true statement that everyone knows at this point. So yeah, no, I would get rid of the mod on my end, but it's on the internet now. Everyone has the files, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, this mod, which was originally called Vampire the Masquerade Redemption Reawakened. Yeah, so they got, they got hit with a no from Activision, which means they're gonna, they're going to base so they're not completely giving up on the project which is uh, this kind of the, this is the silver lining to the story they're not giving up they're not abandoning the project however they are going to rework things from the mod they're basically going to turn it into an original story uh an original vtm story so that they're, they're basically removing anything that um activision could hit them with a lawsuit for so I think at this point it's no longer called Redemption Reawaken. I think it's just called Vampire the Masquerade Reawaken, which honestly just kind of sounds like a cool as fuck Vampire the Masquerade game in general. <laughs> like honestly, um, like Reawakened it just sounds like yeah no, of course like you get you get you know vamped, and yeah you do reawaken so. Within the context of the World of Darkness and Vampire the Masquerade, that name actually kind of makes sense. Um, and I looked at uh, the... I looked at some of the gameplay that they've shown off for it. It looks really fucking cool. It reminds me a lot of um, Bloodlines, which... Uh, quick, quick channel update. I'm going to put this in the news uh, section for next week, too, just so everyone's aware. Uh, I know I mentioned on Twitter about possibly doing a Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines playthrough for October. Uh, I figure now, given that I got a lot going on right now with a bunch of other playthroughs and other playthroughs that I would like to do, I don't think I'm going to, because Bloodlines is an RPG. Like, that's a, that's a full-blown RPG. And usually when I stream RPGs, I try and do the new thing I've been doing, which is, you know, streaming it for four hours um the fuck is vampire the masquerade wait a minute did i not add it to my fucking thing hold on oh wait no that's blood hunt where's bloodlines huh ah. i don't know why i didn't see yeah so that's so it's about 30 that's my full time on it it's 30 hours mm. i mean i could theoretically squeeze that into two hour parts maybe but i think with how much i already got going on right now i don't think bloodlines is going to be feasible for october unfortunately however since i am starting the devil may cry playthrough this saturday um, I think Devil May Cry is a good, um, I think that's a good, like, replacement for that, because that, you know, that was originally, I don't get into it when we get into that playthrough, but Devil May Cry was originally going to be Resident Evil 4, or at least it was the early concept for Resident Evil 4, and then it slowly became its own thing. Um, so it's pretty spooky, it's got, you know, all the, all, like, the sort of spooky iconography and stuff on it, and all that, so I... It works. It works for the month of October. Um, and who knows? Maybe at some point, because uh, I've been because I did that replay through of Quake Two a while back. Um, not a while back, about like a few months ago. I might do Quake One again, especially with the remaster that came out last year. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade re re reawakened. Um, I hope the devs are able to release something. Uh, because it looks like a really cool, uh, Skyrim mod that'll definitely get me back into, uh, the Skyrim craze. Who knows? Maybe, depending on how long it is, I might do a playthrough of that one. Uh, we're, we're gonna have to wait and see. But I'm stoked for reawakened. Looks cool. Uh, and I hope that. 
this fan pro project gets seen to a successful end. But, uh, that's about it. So, Shattered Space, the DLC for, um, Starfield, uh, released this week, and, uh, it is not doing good. <laughs> I have heard jack and or shit about it. This is the first time I've heard anybody even say that, which probably says a lot about a Bethesda DLC. Wait, hold on. I think... Last I saw, it was, like, mostly... Mostly negative? Yeah, it's mostly negative reviews <laughs> right now. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I don't even know how you would do DLC for a game whose, like, base storyline is just justification for a mediocre new game plus. Yeah. Because, like, part of the point of, like, the new game plus thing is, in every universe, things are slightly different. So, like, I guess you could put a lot of effort into DLC, but, like... Making things slightly different just based on, like, what playthrough somebody is in seems like way more work than Bethesda would ever put into a video game. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I still, like, I was semi-interested in playing Starfield when it came out. Now I'm just like, I'm I'm not I'm just not interested. There's just far better like sci-fi games, space adventure games uh, uh, that you can play right now. Like right now, like No Man's Sky. That's probably the biggest one you can play. You got No Man's Sky. You got Elite Dangerous, which I haven't played myself, uh, but I've heard uh, fun things about. And then. You know, even though this game has its own issues, I know there's a lot of people that like Star Citizen, so you could fucking just play Star Citizen. I'm just gonna, like, do my my chud thing of mentioning Star Sector and refusing to elaborate. Hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, Star Sector is my favorite space game. There is one game i came across this what it is uh so this is game coming out soonish it's called uh it's called jump ship where uh it's a co-op uh pve space exploration game it, it kind of just looks like space sea of thieves and it it looks really fun uh, it does have a release date. It still says 2024, which I'm going to assume that may just get pushed back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just like there, there are just far better space games you can play right now instead of Starfield. And, uh, yeah. Very disappointing. Mm hmm. Um, but speaking of space games, uh, I, I wanna, I wanted to talk about, uh, Destiny 2 a little bit today, because, uh, they just had a big development stream, I think it was, like, this week, uh, talking about the upcoming episode that I think is either releasing next Tuesday or the Tuesday after. It is, uh, episode 2 Revenant, and... Uh, during the stream, they talked about how they want, they, they basically just, they, they want like new people coming into Destiny to, to have a good time and all that. Because they're doing away with some of the stupid, like, uh, free-to-play model shit that they were doing with uh, the seasons by doing the whole like, oh, you do this series of quests, and now you go meet this person here, and now you gotta wait a week uh, for the weekly reset before you can continue. And, uh... They're doing away with that, but the big thing for me, and I had a whole thing about this in the Discord server, about how if Bungie really wants new players to have, like, a fun experience in Destiny 2, at least from, at least from like, a story perspective, they just, they need to re-add in the old campaigns. 
What? Bro, like, you're telling me they shouldn't have removed a bunch of content I paid for? Exactly. And it, it's wild to me because Destiny 2 is the only MMO I've played to my knowledge that does this. And and I'm because I think World of Warcraft did it before. I'm not sure. I know they rewrite shit, but I don't, I don't play World of Warcraft, so I wouldn't know. But like. The, the big thing that I because I jumped back into Destiny 2 when Beyond Light came out and that was when they got rid of uh, I think it was EO, Mercury, Mars and Titan and the uh, in story overall narrative reason for why those planets no longer exist was because the witness basically whisked them to a, a void of some sort in uh, via his flagship um but uh, at this point in the story, though, we've beaten the witness. We've taken over this flagship in Rude Nightmares. Why can't we just use the room with all the plants in to re-add those plants back? <laughs> Is my first thing. <clears throat> but also, but, well, oh, do you want do you want to go first on that? I don't even need to worry about lore bullshit, to be honest. Uh, Destiny 2 is so bereft of things to do that removing things to do from the game never made sense to begin with. Mm. Um, at least in my opinion. Because, like, okay, Gambit came out in, like, what, 2016, 2017? And, like, nothing has changed about Gambit in, like, seven Or, years. like, none of the PvP, for that matter. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, they've changed the balancing a little bit in places. Hunters are still broken, but they're not as broken as they used to be when I played. It's basically what but I heard. My big thing was that, like, why should new players have to be worrying about what the current narrative is? Why can't they just play the game until they get to the... It's like, and I, I kind of used 14, Final Fantasy 14 as an example. Say, next expansion comes out, right? And certain parts of Eorzea get invaded, and so those areas are locked off for a little bit until, you know, you beat the expansion and those areas are unlocked again. Uh, but if you're a new player, when this expansion drops, you're wondering, oh, well, why why are these certain sections of the world map blocked off for me? Well, because they're being invaded. Uh, why? Have you gotten to Shadowbringers yet? You've gotten to Shadowbringers. Yeah, dude, I, I, I've gone through Shadowbringers and I've gotten through all of, um... Uh, like basically i'm fully caught up on msq when you first get to Shadowbringers, the sun exists and it doesn't matter if uh you get there today or if you got there i don't know whenever shadow bringers released i think it was like 2020 uh the, the sun is still there right if i were to play the opening of Shadowbringers with a new player, the map would be complete darkness for me because that's the development that happens over the course of the story. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't actually know that that would be the case uh, until I played through it with a friend again. Uh, and she mentioned that everything was completely dark still, even though I'm sitting here waddling around in complete sunlight. Um, and like the only real like thing you can say about it is just bungie doesn't want to pay the server costs i guess even though servers are so dirt cheap to run that like several other developers for games that like nobody even plays anymore still have servers for those games that are running yeah, but the, the 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 point i was trying to make was that like okay so new player can't access certain parts of Eorzea because, oh, places get invaded. But why, why, why is it being invaded? Well, you gotta, the new expansion just dropped. Okay, well, why do I gotta worry about the new expansion when I just started the fucking game? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> well, Destiny 2 had a lot of crosstalk between DLCs too. That's why you'd have like level, or light level, like fucking 400 enemies in starting zones that would just instantly Ooh. kill like fucking new players for no reason. It's because Bungie is really stupid and like tries to reuse too many things for no reason yeah um but like somehow while reusing things they don't reuse them enough which is why they justify getting rid of them entirely it's weird it's whoever is like leading bungie doesn't know what's happening the guy who's 
The guy who's leading Bungie is too busy buying vintage cars to worry about what the fuck Destiny 2 is ha like going on right now. Is That's that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but and it's like okay, the you can make the the storage space uh argument, but um MMOs are naturally going to be large as fuck in terms of download size anyway. Like MMOs are the only games where I can justify them being up to 100 gigs of download size because they are meant to be like they are the original as much as i hate to say it they are the original live service game like those are games that are meant to be played for years on end so the download sizes for those games being large as fuck makes sense so the most bungie could do is do the fucking warframe thing and just remove bloat that doesn't that won't impact the game at all. I mean, my thing is, even if you, like, got rid of some of the open world stuff, like, there's no reason why you can't do the story instances. Yeah. Um, and you know what's funny is that they kind of did something similar to that uh, up to the release of The Final Shape. They did this, um... What was it called? Uh... There, there was a mode that there was like a thing on the uh, destinies on the destinations tab that you could go to i think it was called like i think it was literally called echoes of the past where you played certain missions from the different from some of the old expansions like for uh for example you would you could play like the opening uh mission of forsaken uh during the the prison break of the prison of elders uh, and there was like a couple. Of, I can't remember what the other missions were, but um, yeah, you could I play think those. You still can, but like the so here's the thing. Uh, if you're a new player, you have no reason to care about any of that in the sense of like we are so far removed from context that like there's no reason why you would want to go back and play the first mission of a DLC. Because you don't know anybody involved, because that whole thing revolves around Cade, right? So you don't know who Cade is, you don't know why Cade's important, you've probably heard his name, and like, maybe you've seen some funny haha -ha memes about him, and that's it. <laughs> um... That's, that's a returning player thing. That's like, I would want to go back and play the first mission of a DLC that no longer exists, um and like you might want to do that i don't know if you were still playing at that point uh, i'm still like I, i'm still playing like destiny 2 now i'm well, just I, like i'm just i'm maxed out in the past so i'm just waiting for the next episode to drop i don't know i as in i don't know when you started playing destiny i started oh. playing destiny 2 like directly i think after warmind um because that's when nathan got me into it I want to say I started playing... It was just before they went free to play it because I grabbed it when it was a free game on PlayStation Plus and I played through the Red War campaign. Uh, yeah, you came, like, probably and, just before I left. And I left the moment they got rid of, like, Mars and all that. Yeah, so th that would have been just, like, right around Beyond Light coming out. Unless they did it, like, sometime after Forsaken... And like the the seasonal stuff mm -hmm. but yeah no because i remember playing it i try i remember trying to play it with you guys but this was back when i had my shitty alienware alpha so i couldn't run that game for shit <laughs> on pc um but yeah no but it's like i i've i've heard people straight up say that they refuse to play destiny 2 just because they can't like, they, they want to experience the game from the beginning and play it all the way to whatever the current expansion is, and now they can't do that because they vaulted four fucking campaigns. <laughs> and so people are just like, yeah, I can't, I can't get into Destiny 2 because if I can't play it from the beginning, then what's the point? Which is funny how I can kind of give Destiny 1 a pass on this because, yeah, that game's a fully, that's a fully priced game but you can buy the complete edition for like 50 60 bucks that has the base game plus the expansions and you can play through 
all of Destiny 1. It, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Like, that's the thing. So, the only problem with Destiny 1 is, like, I don't think there are any mechanics for you to, like, solo most of it. Because that was my issue, is I started playing Destiny 1... Uh, and nobody was playing any of the content I was doing, so I had- I soloed, like, I don't know, the first, like, five or six hours of the campaign, and just hit a wall that I couldn't even grind past. Uh, it was specifically during, like, this one ogre fight, uh, which I could go look up his boss name and all that, mm. and exactly, like, what he's well about. I right. was able to get through the main story. Like, I was able to get through that, and I think I got to the dark below. I'm not... Maybe they changed some stuff? Because I know... Because I, I know when you buy the complete edition, they straight up give you uh, level up boosts. Oh, yeah, okay. So, they that didn't exist when I was playing. So, they they probably just overstat you for shit. If yeah. I had to imagine. Um, which is better than what I went through. Uh, because that's the reason why I stopped playing Destiny 1, is because I literally just couldn't do shit. Um, and, like, basically, the ogre guy would one-shot me no matter what I did. Uh, and even if I, like, did the fight enough to get stacks of heavy ammo and just rocketed him, I could get him down to, like, half HP before he would just one-shot me again. Um, and I was just like, fuck this, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was having fun up until that point, because it's supposed to be, like, I don't, I don't think it was a full raid, but it was, like, a strike team thing, where you need, uh. like, three people to do it normally, uh, and it just was not designed for the idea that you could solo it. Yeah, because, uh. um, the only strike I ever was able to, like, do, a, get a quick match on, and it was always the same fucking strike, I, I want to say it was, um... Is it the House of Wolves? Is that one of the expansions for... On. I think that's. I can't remember if House of Wolves. Uh, was a... I don't think it was a strike though. I thought it was like a raid. No. Okay. So House of Wolves is a uh, is one of the um, expansions, uh, but it came with a strike, I believe. Oh, okay. So it's one of the strikes out of there. Yeah. Okay. It was the expansion after Dark Below, because it was Dark Below, House of Wolves, Taken King, and Rise of Iron. Yeah, I uh, I loosely know Destiny One's story just because I have friends that have been playing since the start of Destiny's existence. Shadow oh, Thief, that's him. what it was called. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. Yeah, Destiny dialogue is fucking awful. <laughs> Little would we know that that NPC at the end of Destiny 1 would be would become a, a bit of a major player in today's Destiny in, in Destiny's current narrative. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, the slowly derailing train that all started at the end of Destiny 1. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think House of Wolves introduced Varix in the House of in the Prison of Elders. It did. Yeah, because you can talk to Varix. Because I think Varix is a vendor. Uh, in that one. And I think the main hub where you were first introduced to, like, Marasov, Petra, and the rest of the other, uh, Fallen... Yeah, no, because it was also, uh, the expansion that introduced, uh, Uldren Sav, I believe. I could be wrong on that, though. But, uh, you know... Uh, simple, but Destiny 2, th that, that was one of the big things I was hoping for when Final Shape dropped, was to give us the ability to, you know, play the old campaigns again, but nope. Even though the some of the planets are back, like Mars and Titan are back, but in very limited capacities, um, I don't think they've re-added Io or Mercury, so... <laughs> I guess I'll just die. <laughs> guess I'll just die sad. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with Destiny. Uh, there was just a certain point in time where, like, 
even now, like, okay, the reason why I won't get back into Destiny is because literally everything I had bought doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Like, so I, I would be starting basically as a free-to-play player. Like, I, I would probably be behind what a free-to-play player would be uh, because I'd have all my old gear and light-level stuff. Um, and they'd probably, like, jump me forward, I'd imagine, but, like... They do give you, like, they, I, I feel like they've been a little bit better on this, uh, where if you are a new player, they will give you a lot of, like, higher level gear per, like, strike, basically. You just have to be kind of conservative with your upgrade modules, because they still limit you to 25. Yeah. So say you get a weapon with a really good roll on it that you want to keep, you just got to make sure you don't accidentally uh, dismantle it. Because <laughs> I've, I've done that before and it's not fun. But, uh... Hey, you know what, though? Hopefully... If today is, in fact, going to be the finale of Mass Effect 3, we'll actually be playing a loot shooter that is fun next week. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, now you want to play a loot shooter? Oh, God. Yeah, this can only go well. I think it's my favorite part of that. It, oh, come on. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine! What's the worst that could happen? Everyone gets into a duel to fight for the loot. Or were, were duels only a thing in Borderlands 2? Uh, I actually don't remember if they were in Borderlands 1 or not. I didn't, I don't think there was ever like... So, okay, let me put it this way. Borderlands 2, I got into duels specifically to trigger glitches because there's a lot of glitches revolving around duels. For example, um, uh, anybody who gets shot by zero while in a duel counts as an object for boar, so you can one-shot raid bosses. That's uh, fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was like the setup to killing Terramorphous, as you would have... Uh, one of your friends challenge you to a duel, stand in front of the Terramorphous spawn, and then you would just pour. Oh, you uh, know what? Actually, sorry to sidetrack a little bit. Uh, speaking of raids, uh, I guess a, a raid just dropped for Fallout 76, and the boss is this giant fucking Cobra demon looking thing. Oh, nice. Like, it actually looks pretty fucking badass. It's an irradiated Cobra. <laughs> Mom, is that you? Oh, that's kind of neat. That is one thing know. that I'm kind of happy in seeing. I'm happy to see Fallout 76 as being a little bit better than it used to be. I think everything around it looks too MMO and not very Fallout. I think everything here looks too MMO and not very Fallout to me. Hmm. Like, the idea of a giant radioactive snake is, like, pretty cool, but, like... I, I don't know if it's, like, just the 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 way the style looks... But I don't know, it just feels like an MMO thing. And, like, I've never... Imagine if you walked into, like, the fucking Deathclaw Cave. Deathwind Caverns, that's what it's called, in New Vegas. Uh, and you saw something like this. And I'd just kind of be like, I don't know. I feel like Fallout's a, usually a little more grounded than giant glowy green crystal cave with giant green goop everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but... I don't know, it's neat. It could be fun. Uh, I can see how it could be fun. I do like that it has fucking a trillion eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be neat if, like, it would actually slither, like, across the ground and, like, wrap itself up and cut off, like, different parts of the map at times. I don't know if it would actually do that, but that's what I would think about. Uh, I like that it's got little crystals and it's, uh... I don't know why it has armor plates because it's a snake, so it should have scales, but uh, between it's like little armor plates. But um, you want to know what's uh, funny? The the raid itself is called the Gleaming Depths. The Gleaming Depths. Yep. Uh, oh, 
Okay, no, actually, speaking of Borderlands, this just looks like the cost at Cavern. That's what's throwing me off. <laughs> oh, I, I've not played Fall... Uh, obviously, you know, I haven't played B Borderlands in a while, so I don't know what that is. Hold on, let me see if I can find the, the loading screen. Right, I will send you an image of the cost at Caverns and tell me this doesn't look like the cost at Caverns. It looks oh my like god, it actually does! What the? Okay, you know, I think I, I vaguely remember this now. <laughs> <laughs> the cost at caverns is like the first really good grinding spot you uh hit up so like a lot of people spend a lot of time in here during their first like hour of their playthrough mm. um just because there's the the giant like stompy crab guys that are everywhere that you can blow up and you can get a bunch of iridium damn it really does just look like that it, that's what's throwing me the fuck off it it looks it doesn't feel fallout to me it's fine but it doesn't feel fallout to me hmm. uh but I, you could say that about most of 76. the weird bat demon like queen boss thing that, the, the like, skyrim boss the first end game fight that was already kind of weird to me if this if this is just like the direction they're going where like they're making fallout kind of weird i'm kind of cool with it um, i mean hey you could do a lot with what creatures turn into when they're ra irradiated i love the idea of like on the west coast we've got the spurs on my boots jingle jangle and it's like super serious and like incredible and then like on the east coast shit's just fucking insane <laughs> i do kind of like the dichotomy if that's what they want to stick with like if they go back out west and like have another serious fallout game i think i'd be cool with that that would mm. be funny to me Dude, I, so I've been playing, obviously I've been playing New Vegas on my off time. You want to know something I completely forgot about? And fucking may he rest in peace. I forgot Matthew Perry voices Benny. He voices the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was wa- So I was watching- uh fucking elementary which is a sherlock holmes show with, oh uh, yeah one of my friends one of the villains in elementary is joshua fucking graham and like i didn't realize it was the same guy at first uh because i forgot he was an actor as well as a voice actor um so i'm sitting here and like just watching the show and then suddenly he starts talking about anger and like how it fuels him every day and like a wire snapped in my head i was like is this guy joshua graham and then i looked it up and it was joshua graham <laughs> amazing yeah uh, right now i've just kind of been i i recruited boone which fuck man i'm so sorry for boone We'll get into I, Boone once I eventually get to fall on New Vegas in, in terms of playthroughs, but oh, damn. I I like Boone. I think he offers a lot of interesting mechanics. I miss RPGs that gave you quests that you could miss with companions because I didn't actually do Boone's quest fully uh, with turning to Bitter Springs and all that until like my seventh playthrough of new vegas <laughs> but um yeah right now i've just kind of been well i i completely wiped out all the great cons uh because i'm kind of doing the ncr quest line as well uh so i've wiped out the great cons i'm basically killing any and all legion i see <laughs> because uh you know you're giving me slavers in a fallout game i'm gonna kill their asses so But, uh, yeah, no. I've been having a moment. Uh, I see why most people, uh, I see why a lot of the Fallout community prefers New Vegas over 3. Um. That, and I don't know, I think the Mojave Desert just looks more aesthetically pleasing than the Capital Wasteland. I, there was a reason why the, literally the first mod I fucking sent you for Fallout 3 removes the fucking filter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the the Mojave hits the same vibes that Fallout 3 manages to in a lot of places. Um, excuse me. Well, simultaneously, like, it adds so many vibes of its own. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Like, you get the NCR soldiers that talk about, oh, I wish for nuclear winter. And I'm just sitting here like, dude, the Mojave is, I think, one of the most beautiful places I've ever walked around in my entire life. Mm. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, you kind of get it, right? Like, it's not a fun place for the NCR to be. Uh, and I think New Vegas in general is just, like, interesting to interact with on a deeper level. Because um, you can play New Vegas just as, like, a brain-dead waddler. Um, but you can also go through New Vegas, like, exploring some pretty interesting themes and lore. Like, there's a whole, like, slight meta commentary in each of the DLCs uh, involving Elijah. And it's a whole bunch of lore that, like, you don't even really need to know, but you can chase down if you want to. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the best Fallout stories is about some dude in Zion Canyon that you don't even meet. You just find his logs, like, a hundred years after he died. Um, there's a lot of just really neat stuff in New Vegas, uh, that I think, like, it, it's not that Fallout 3 is a bad game, it's that Fallout New Vegas took the good parts of Fallout 3 and it added so much more that it's absurd just mm -hmm. how much is in that game.